Hi, my name is Miss Melissa and I am a teaching artist in the PACE program. You might be watching this video in your classroom or you might be watching it at home. But no matter where you are, we are going to have fun today. Today, we're gonna to be learning about communities. Did you know that there are three types of communities? We are going to explore this subject and create one of these communities today with a cool art project. But before we start, you may be wondering, what is a community? Do you know what it is? A, com a community is a group of people that live in the same place and share the things that are in their surroundings. What are some of the places that you need to go to? For example, your parents may have to go to um, work and you have to go to school. Yes, any other places that you need to go to? If you were thinking the grocery store, maybe the bank, right? Now, what are some of the places that you want to go to in your community? I bet you were thinking things like the park, maybe an ice cream stand, or even the movies, right? Those are fun places to go to. So besides sharing all of these businesses and places to go to, we all need a place to live. Some people live in the city, some people live in neighborhoods, and some in the countryside. We are going to make a picture of the countryside today and learn about a rural community. Why don't we go and take a look at the three different types of communities first so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I want you to take a look at these three different pictures. They are all three different communities. Let's go over them together. This picture is a rural community. Very good. Another word for rural community could be countryside, maybe even country, okay? And you can take a look at what this looks like. Now the next picture, we have a what? Suburban, sub urban suburban community All right you can see the picture here and another word for suburban community is neighborhood and then our last community we have it says what urban right and here you can see the picture and you may another word for urban you may hear the word city even town okay so if you take a really good look, you could see how all of these are different, right? Look at the one in the middle. What do you see? Yeah, you see a lot of houses and trees, right? Um, this could be a neighborhood. Oh, and by the way, the VS stands for versus, like meaning we're just gonna compare this to this one and that one to that one. This just means to like compare. Um, that's what the VS stands for. So so now, okay, so we looked at this one. Uh, we saw a lot of houses and trees. Actually, I have a video that I made already, and I think it was called, I called it Suburban Neighborhood. So if you want, you could even check that one out because I showed you how to make a suburban neighborhood. So let's keep going. Um, today, we're gonna make obviously a different one. And let's look at this one. What do you see here? Just take a minute. Yeah, you only see like what, maybe one house? This could be a farmhouse, right? You can see some trees, but how is this different than the other two? I mean, yeah, look, you have a lot of ground, a lot of grass, real open, a big open area full of grass, fields. They look like crops, right? And then what else do you notice that you could see a lot of? Were you thinking the sky? 
if you live in a rural community, there's nothing blocking your path. There's no neighbor's houses in the way. There's no tall buildings. So you get to really enjoy the landscape, you know, which is the sky and the land. So here's a good example of a rural community. Now, if you look at this, what do you notice in this picture for the urban community? Oh yeah, most definitely. I know you were thinking lots of busy streets, cars, buildings, lights, skyscrapers, right? Look at all those windows. Very, very busy, huh? Um, completely, almost completely opposite of being in the countryside. So guess what we're going to make today? We are going to make a rural community. We are going to pretend we live there while we're making it. And I bet you can guess this one's gonna be the most quiet and peaceful, right? But it can also be the most fun. We are going to need to draw lines and shapes today. So I'm gonna want you to take a look at my drawing board first. I'm gonna show you what shapes we're gonna be working with today. I'm gonna to draw them for you on my whiteboard. Here we have a square. I'm doing, you know, it's not gonna be perfect, but I'm doing the best I can. A square typically has one, two, three, four sides, right? We're also going to be using possibly a rectangle. It also has how many sides? Yep, four, and we have two long and two short. We're also going to be using the shape of a triangle, yep. And all of these shapes, are. we use what type of line? Straight or curvy? Straight, very good. All of these shapes are made with straight lines. Now let me show you some other shapes that we're going to use today. Here we have a circle and here we have an oval. And you know, it's not perfect, but it's close enough. I just want you to look at these. Um, they're very, these are very similar because they are both made with curvy lines, right? Now out of all of these shapes, which ones do you think we're gonna be using today to make a barn and a house and even a fence? And there, I'll give you a hint, we're gonna use three of them. Very good. If you were thinking we're gonna use the square, the triangle and the rectangle, you are correct. Now, which one of these shapes, and I'll, there are two of them, do you think that we're gonna need to make animals with today. If you were thinking we're gonna need the circle and the oval, you are correct. So now I'm gonna show you what supplies you need for today so we can get started. You are going to need one white sheet of paper You are also gonna need one sheet of red construction paper, one pencil, one pair of scissors, one glue stick, and if you don't have a glue stick, you could always get a glue bottle. And lastly, you are going to need your box of crayons. So please go ahead and get these supplies pause the video and I will be here when you get back. First thing I want you to do is get your red paper and we're going to fold this paper in half. It's gonna look kind of like a book. Make the sides and the corners touch. See, they're gonna meet up and then press. Okay, now it should look like this. If you folded it to where it looks like a giant hot dog,
That's not how I want you to do it. I want you to fold it in half this way to where it looks like a book. Please take your scissors. Remember, thumb goes in the small hole, your fingers go in the big hole, right? We're gonna open this up and open wide and cut. Open wide and cut. We're gonna cut this in half. Notice how I'm just sliding the scissors across the paper. I'm just gonna trim that there. All right, so now you have two halves. We don't need one, so you can put it aside. You can put that away. Now we're just working with one half, right? Okay, now what I want you to do is fold this in half again. We still are not gonna be having hot dogs today. We're gonna make a tiny book. The corners and the sides need to touch. Fold it in half. Now let's cut this in half. Now we have two small rectangles. Now we're gonna get rid of this half and just keep this one. See that? This is what we're gonna make our barn with, this rectangle. Now watch. What I want you to do is turn it this way and we're gonna cut this in half, about in half, to where we make two small rectangles. And we're gonna use this sheet. So we're using this. The other papers you can just put aside. One of them is going to be the barn, like the, the, the building part, and the other is gonna be the roof. So with your pencil, if you want to, um, I want you to put your pencil in the bottom corner and we're gonna draw a triangle, but I don't want the triangle to touch at the top. Watch, I'm just gonna draw. See that? If this line kept going, they would touch. So that way, cause barns, you know, have a roof, but it's not like a, a big point. So kind of like a triangle, maybe part of a triangle. Go ahead and draw two lines and we're gonna cut this out. Just do the best you can. Because guess what, even if you draw a point, we can always cut the point off, see? See that, look, you can cut the point off. All right, so get rid of your little pieces. You can put them aside. And now we're gonna have a barn, see that? So I'm gonna put this aside. Let's start drawing the land and the sky so we can put all of our pieces together for our community. With, now we're finished cutting. So we'll, we'll put the barn on our paper later. I wanted to get that out the way. Now we're gonna draw. I want you to draw a straight line at the top of your paper. The bottom part, this is all gonna be the grass and this is gonna be the sky, okay? All right, now, remember how we saw that picture of the community, the rural community, and there was just one farmhouse? We're gonna put a house in the distance, you know, we're gonna draw a square and a triangle. You could even draw a rectangle to make a chimney with smoke coming out of it. What do we need to show that this is a house? A door, which is a rectangle and two windows, which are squares, typically, right? And if you can put some trees next to this house, because remember, we are in the country, the countryside, rural community. You can use any of those words. You could add some more trees if you want, and we're gonna draw on the line. Now, a lot of times in a rural community, you will see a fence. Um, it helps keep animals in, right? So let's draw one straight line, pretty close to the other straight line, right on top, just like I did. This is gonna be the bottom part of the fence and it makes a giant, what? Rectangle, very good. Now let's leave some space and draw another straight line. The fence is gonna connect to the house, okay? And on top of that, we're gonna draw another straight line. 
Now we have one rectangle with some space and two rectangles. It's very long all the way to the house. This is gonna be the fence. So now we're going to draw a rectangle going up and down. Notice I'm using straight lines. And it's gonna stick up just a little bit and it's gonna have lots of space. So you're gonna space out these rectangles. And many times this type of fence is, it's a wooden fence, right? And then we get to color this in in a little bit. I, I like um, I like making fences, and you could leave as much space as you want. Okay, it can show the property line. It can keep the animals in. Now, what I want you to do with me is make a pathway. A lot of times in a rural community, you'll have a long gravel driveway. Sometimes a dirt road. Um, sometimes it could be muddy, right? So where the door is, watch, you're gonna put your pencil here. We're gonna make a giant curve. Go ahead and make a giant curvy line with me, just like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and make another one, but as we go down, we're gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Start off close together and then it gets wider and wider and wider. See that? Very good. This could be the mud, gravel, a dirt road, whatever you want. We have a few more things to draw before we start coloring. You're doing a great job and we're just using curvy and straight lines. Even the tree trunk and my branches and leaves and the smoke. What type of lines did I use? Curvy, very good. We're gonna keep using curvy. How would you like to make a pond? We can show the pond on part of the paper and it could, you know, keep going because I'm kind of running out of room here. So with your pencil, let's kind of make some curvy lines a little bumpy. This could be our pond, right? We could have some grass growing. Some long pieces of grass next to the pond, right? Would you like to draw maybe some ducks or some geese in the pond with me? Okay, great, now watch. You're gonna make an oval maybe like a little rectangle and a circle with a long beak. See that? And the beak is a triangle. Oval, rectangle, circle. Curvy lines for the feathers and the tail. That could, that looks more like a geese. It's very big. Maybe we can put like a baby geese next to it. So we're gonna draw an oval, do this with me, rectangle and a circle with a triangle. Curvy lines for the feathers, right? Cute. Would y'all like to draw another animal with me? Okay, what about, what about a pig? Now, a pig is gonna be bigger than the duck, so I'm gonna make them pretty big right here. Kind of, run, I'm running out of room. I'm gonna have to get my eraser. Okay, I'm gonna erase it. That way I could fit everything on my paper. <laughs> I got too close to the side. So whenever you're looking at a picture like this, usually everything on the top is small and as you work your way down, you get bigger. So if the animal on the bottom is bigger, like pigs are typically bigger than ducks or geese, right? So it's gonna have to be bigger and the fact that we're drawing it at the bottom, it definitely needs to be bigger. I just may have to have him kind of sticking out in the, 
Oh, you know what? We can probably put him walking in the mud. This could be the mud, right? I'm gonna draw the pig right here and I'll color that, so watch. You can draw your pig wherever you want. We just need to save room on this side for our barn. So, you know, please continue to follow along with me. Let's go ahead and draw our pig in the mud. Okay, an oval body with a curly cute tail. And watch this, one, two, three, four oval legs, right? And then a circle head, circle nose, and two circles for his eye, and then some ovals inside of his nose with some little curvy ears. Isn't that a cute pig? <laughs> uh, I think he's cute, he or she, whatever you wanna call him. All right, so, so far, what kind of animals do we have? Geese or ducks, pigs, right? You can always draw more. Let's go ahead and draw some tall grass first. Can you do that with me? Notice I'm using straight and curvy lines, just from the bottom to the top. You just kind of draw some straight and curvy lines. And you could trace this with a green if you want to later on. All right. So I kind of want you to copy off of me a bit. I'm going to press pretty hard over my tall pieces of grass. Now, maybe you don't want to use green. Maybe you want to show um, yellow for wheat or just... There's all kinds of different plants. They could be yellow, but I'm gonna use green. So if you don't use green, I think yellow would probably be the only thing, right? Let's go ahead and color. Let's go ahead and color together before we put the barn on. How about that? Now, um, You know that you can actually live in a rural community. I used to live in a rural community. My house was one of about five houses. Um, I lived in the country and there was a cow pasture right next door uh, to me. I mean, I, could, I used to jump the fence and go pick blackberries and it was really a lot of fun living in the countryside. We had a lot of animals. I would go play outside. I would get to play with the animals. If you lived on a farm or even in a rural community like this, which animals would you like to play with? Would you maybe want to ride horses or let's just color the whole part green, okay? So just color with me. We're gonna cover this, color this down first before we put the barn. So I don't know, maybe maybe you wanna ride horses, right? Maybe you wanna have baby chicks. It could be a lot of fun. Now I'm I'm coloring pretty quickly because I know my time with you is gonna end pretty soon. So if I'm going too fast, you could always stop and pause the video. But as soon as I'm finished with the grass and my arm, I don't know about you, but my arm is getting tired. We're gonna have to put our barn down, glue it down. So yeah, it was, it was definitely fun living in a rural community. And then my grandparents used to raise cows and they also grew crops. So not only is it nice to live in a, you know, in the country or the countryside, um, but people actually work and they grow food, grow different crops because it's, you know, it can become a source of food. Same with animals. That's why you see a lot of cows. So it's kind of like it could be a business in a way too. All right, so whether you're finished or not, 
we need to glue the born down. I want you to do this with me. You can pause the video or you can at least glue down what you have. Take your glue stick and you're going to rub it all over the bottom and you can stick it anywhere as you want. I'm going to kind of put it in the middle. Now I have a black piece of paper around mine. That way you could see it. If anything is sticking up, you can glue it down. And then I'm going to glue my triangular shape roof. Okay. All right. So now let's make this look even more like a barn. We're going to draw straight lines together. I want you to take your crayon and just color on the edge of the roof, kind of like outlining it, tracing it. I'm, I'm pressing pretty hard. That way you could see it. And we'll go over the green. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is draw a giant door. It's gonna basically look like a square, maybe even a rectangle. On the building, I want you to draw a giant door and we're gonna draw one line going down like that, down the middle of it. And you're gonna follow me and we're gonna make an X on one door and we're gonna make an X on another door. Go ahead and do that for me. So we had a square or rectangle, a straight line with two X's. Now we're going to make some very tall windows. We'll have one tall window in the middle with two on the side. So basically you're just making some rectangles, right? And there's my barn. Pretty cool, huh? And you can, you can make the roof a little bit thicker by adding more black. And you know, there's all types of barns. They even have barns that are brown too, but we see a lot of red barns. So my time is unfortunately up. I would love to color with you. Um, but it's time for me to go. So look at what I did. I already made another picture to show you. You can finish coloring on your own. Didn't that come out nice? Notice I put dirt for my road and I colored the fence brown and I decided to go with yellow for the ducks and pink for the pig. And you can make your house whatever color you want and even put the time of day you want. Thanks for joining me today. We learned about so many things. We learned about three types of communities, urban, suburban, and rural. Very good. We learned that rural communities can be quiet and peaceful, especially if you live there, but it could also be fun. Do you remember why it could be so much fun? Yes, you can go exploring in the country by running in the fields of grass. You can feed the animals, go fishing, play with animals, and even play in the mud if you want to. We also learned that rural communities can be a place of business too. Do you remember how it can be a place of business? If you were thinking it could be a place where you could grow crops, maybe corn, wheat, sweet potatoes, or even a place to raise animals like cows and chickens, both of these plants and animals can be a source of food which is why you can see a lot of farms in rural communities. Well, I hope you had fun making your rural community today with me. I think you did a great job and I thought you did really good using your imagination too. And as you go through your week, maybe you will get the chance 
to drive by a rural community and see lots of land, animals, and maybe even a barn. Maybe you even live in a rural community. Well, I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time.